Hi, this is Jennifer Danalo from Norris Medical Library. And as part of your tra transition to clinical practice, I'm gonna be talking about mobile apps for clinical information. There are basically two different classes of apps that I'll talk about today. One is library subscribed apps. So these are mobile apps that generally require some sort of fee to gain access to. Um, however, they're free to USC affiliates. And I'll walk through the process of how you set those apps up on your device. Then I'll also talk about free apps, which are available for anyone to download from the App Store or Google Play. And the ones that we recommend are, have been vetted by librarians. And in that vetting process, we look at who produces the app, uh, what kind of information they're providing, and we also get feedback from clinicians and other folks about what what apps work well. So as we go through the rest of this video, I'm not going to be using the PowerPoint any longer, but feel free to follow along uh, in the PowerPoint. Or if you want to grab your device and uh, start setting up the apps too, that is more than welcome. All right, so on our journey through uh, clinical applications, um, it starts at uh, the USC Norris Medical Library homepage. Uh, you can Google that or it's nml.usc.edu. On the homepage, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down uh, to the popular resources box and click on the Health Sciences uh, Mobile Resources Guide. Uh, and this is where we have all the information about uh, different apps that the library subscribe to um, and also ones that are recommended. Um, the first box here is the help box, so if you ever have any questions, um, there's multiple ways to get in, in touch with us. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this clinical information tab, which is uh, where most of the information that we're interested in is uh, going to be. Uh, so we have these divided into two different boxes, uh, USC paid apps and then USC free apps. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with these paid apps and scroll down to uh, the up-to-date app. Um, and you can see here that um, for each app, we have instructions already listed here. Um, there's even um, a little uh, GIF, don't come at me if you say a GIF, um, for uh, how to sign in and uh, re-update, re-up your uh, up-to-date subscription, which I'll talk about uh, in a second. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click uh, this up-to-date app link. When you arrive at the up-to-date page, um, it looks just like you've probably used, seen before with the search box and everything. Um, and what you're going to want to do now is uh, register your account um, if you haven't already. You can click that button um, and you're going to go ahead and add uh, that information. All right, so now that I'm logged in, um, I can go ahead and go to my account. Um, so there are a few different things. Uh, UpToDate does track your CME uh, as you use UpToDate whenever you're logged into your account. Um, so you can actually see up here that I actually have 10 CME uh, credits through UpToDate. Um, so I'm going to be getting my, my medical license really, really soon. Anyway, sorry, sarcasm. Um, what's really important here actually is uh, the subscription section uh, right here. Your subscription is now linked to the USC library subscription and um, what that allows is uh, you can use up to date um, on two different mobile devices uh, for uh, 90 days and after 90 days you have to come back to up to date through the library homepage and log into up to date. Uh, into your personal account. That just resyncs your account with um, the USC Libraries account. And when that happens, when you click view expiration date, um, it'll tell you what your new uh, subscription expiration is. So mine is now July 22nd, 2021, which is 90 days from now, I assume. Um, so that's really the most important part and uh, the thing that we get the most questions about uh, when it comes to up to date is that 90 day uh, expiration. But as long as um, you, uh, you come back and you do this login, uh, then you shouldn't have any uh, issue. Uh, the other thing that you want to uh, be aware of is you are limited to mo two mobile devices. So if you click manage my devices, 
um, you can deactivate or log out uh, any device uh, that you might not be using anymore. All right, the next step in this process is to download the app onto my mobile device, whether that's through the App Store or Google Play. And this is what the app will look like when I open it up. I can log into my UpToDate account that I just set up. Upon initial login, there'll be this license agreement. I can just click accept and it'll take me to the UpToDate app homepage. Um, so you can see here, there's a basic search box up at the top. Um, there are a few calculators here in UpToDate and that includes calculators like um, for APGAR score, um, a blood ethanol concentration estimation, BMI, um, those types of calculators. Uh, as I mentioned, it does track your CME credits and you can see under my name uh, that I have 19. So that those will be really useful. Um, there's also a patient education section, so you can <clears throat> access those materials directly. Um, and search in the app is exactly the same as you would see uh, online. It does also maintain your search history, so you can see what other um, searches you've done in the past in case you need to redo, repeat a search rather quickly. In this particular case, I'm going to look up Cauti. C-A-U-T-I, and CAUTI stands for Catheter Associated Urinary Tract Infection. Uh, just like in the web version, I have adult, pediatric, and patient filters up here at the top. And if I click on just the first uh, result, it takes me to the up-to-date page, just like you would expect to see in the website. So if you're, on, if you're on your phone or a smaller uh, screen, you may have to look for uh, the menu that's over here on the left side. It may be um, at the very top of the page and you may have to scroll past or um, at the bottom. So using the UpToDate app is pretty straightforward and pretty similar to using the UpToDate website. An important thing to remember with accessing UpToDate through the mobile app is that it does only have that 90 day subscription or certificate period. So at the end of the 90 days, you will have to go back to the Norris Medical Library homepage, access UpToDate through that page, and log into your personal account and that will reset your expiration date. I can also access my account information by clicking my name and I can see my expiration date. The other thing that you uh, want to keep track of is you can only use your account on up to two mobile devices. And if I go to manage my devices, it will list what devices I have. So that comes in really handy. If, for example, if you switch phones or something like that, you can delete um, old, old devices. All right, the next app I want to look at is uh, called Clinical Key. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the Clinical Key section um, of the, the research guide. I'll go ahead and click that Clinical Key link. Uh, clinical Key is a little bit different than up to date um, in that uh, instead of um, summaries or overviews of clinical information, um, you're actually going to be searching directly for uh, published guidelines and uh, in journal journal articles. Uh, and like UpToDate, it will also track your uh, CME credits. And also like UpToDate, to get access to the mobile app, you want to click that register button and uh, register for a free account. I already have an account, so I'm gonna go ahead and click log in. All right, and now that I'm logged in, um, I can take a look at my uh, settings or my own um, account information. What I really want with relation to the mobile app is to check out my remote access and um, apply for that. And you wanna make sure that you use your at usc.edu email um, that helps to um, connect your account to um, your USC uh, uh, affiliation, which is how you'll get access. Um, and then uh, once that is done, then um, you should be able to log into your Clinical Key app uh, using your Clinical Key login information. I am already logged into my Clinical Key account. It's a pretty basic interface, just like what we saw with UpToDate. 
there is a search box in the center. Uh, clinical key also tracks your CME credits. Uh, in clinical key, in up, as in up to date, it also uh, remembers your recent searches. And again, I'm going to search for CAUTI. I'm interested in finding some guidelines about treatment and prevention of CAUTI. And as I mentioned before, Clinical Key has book chapters, it has um, articles, and if you look above the title and the results, you'll see it tells you what kind of resource you're looking at. So the first uh, result is a book chapter. The second one says Medline, and if you remember, Medline is um, a subset of PubMed that's focused on uh, clinical medicine. So my screen is a little bit cut off in this recording, but at the very bottom of my screen is a gray bar that says Filter By, and if I click on that, it'll bring up some filter categories. So I mentioned that I was looking at, I was interested in finding guidelines on prevention of CAUTI. So in the filters, if I click content type, I can then select uh, those different options for the types of content that are in clinical key. I can click guidelines, and that gives me 14 results. So I had almost 3,000, now I have 14. And if you look above the title again, you'll see that it tells you that there are guidelines, there are NICE guidelines. NICE guidelines are uh, guidelines in the UK. And you can see that the first guideline is actually prevention of Cotty. And so that's exactly what I'm looking for. Maybe instead of guidelines, I actually want to find some systematic reviews or randomized control trials. If I click study type, um, that will take me to a filter and I can click systematic review and get straight to the high quality uh, pieces of evidence. And some journal articles in Clinical Key are full text, others are from Medline. So in this particular example, if I click on relationship of catheter-associated urinary tract infection to mortality and length of stay, um, that is a Medline article. And you'll see that I get the abstract, I can scroll down, I get those nice mesh terms, um, just like I would see if I found this article in PubMed. And just like in PubMed, there's also that Find It at USC link. So when I click on the Find It at USC button, it will open up a tab in my browser that takes me to the full text of um, the article. So it's pretty easy to get access to that information through Clinical Key. All right, the next app I'm gonna show you is called uh, UCentral. And um, again, it's located here on the mobile resources guide. And uh, there are instructions for how to uh, create your account and get set up with the uh, mobile app. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this UCentral app link uh, on the guide. All right, here I am at UCentral. Here's a list of the different uh, eBooks that are available through the UCentral app. Uh, in addition to um, the Prime for You is a is a PubMed search. Um, so rather than just registering for a free account here on the UCentral website, uh, we actually uh, are going to go ahead and click this mobile app or this mobile link um, located here at the top. Um, and you're going to go ahead and log in and then you or register to uh, or register for a free account uh, to get access to uh, the U Central app. Um, so you have to enter uh, this easy bit of information, click continue, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, follow the steps through to uh, get access to the Unbound Medicine app. All right, I have my account set up and I've logged into the app. And it's important to note with UCentral that sometimes it has updates to run. So the first time you log in, there'll be several updates that it will need to install. And sometimes it can take um, a few minutes, depending on your connection speed, for all of those updates. So UCentral is a little bit different than Clinical Key in UpToDate in that it is a finite set of clinical books. And so this is uh, where we subscribe to the five-minute consult series. So here on the UCentral app 
homepage. Um, at the top, you'll, you can see the list of books and resources that are available through Youth Central. The first one is the Medline search. Uh, so this is going to search those Medline articles that I mentioned um, are also available in Clinical Key. Um, I've heard good things about this Medline search in that it's relatively easy to use. Uh, so if I click on it, I can search for Cotty. Uh, I get a list of resources, but I really, I'm really just interested in finding some systematic reviews or meta-analyses. So if I click on pub type, it'll open up a list of the different filters that I can, um, that I can use. So if I select meta-analysis, I can get a set of meta-analyses. To get back to the home, I'm going to click the house at the top. So back at the home page. Um, I see the list of four uh, five-minute consult books that we have, Clinical Emergency Pediatric and Sports Medicine. If I swipe to the left, I can see more resources that are available. There's a few calculators here. Um, we have the Harriet Lane Handbook, which is a common pediatric handbook. Um, there's a John Hopkins Antibiotics Guide and more John Hopkins guides. And if I swipe all the way to the left, there is the um, Merck manual as well. Now I could go to an individual title if I want, or up in the upper right hand corner, there is a general search. So if I wanna continue looking for information about Cotty, I can um, type that in there and it's going to give me a list of uh, resources that are available and uh, the icon on the left side indicates which resource it's from. So the first one's from the John Hopkins Antibiotics Guide. Um, this is doing an index search. I can also click full text search and that'll change um, my results set to just the Merck manual and then the five minute clinical consult. And if I click the nosocomial infections, it'll take me straight to uh, that section of the text. And you can see that in the five minute clinical consult. And as this text is intended for clinical information, um, you can see that it's giving me a description, it's giving me the epidemiology, but it's all bulleted. So it's really quick, uh, easy to read information. I can scroll through here to find the information that I'm, that I'm looking for. This app is really great for finding um, information on a variety of clinical topics in a bulleted, easy to use um, format. All right, the last paid uh, clinical app that I want to tell you about is called uh, Visual DX. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to um, the Visual DX link here. Um, again, there are the instructions um, on how to set up your account. And I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, that link. So uh, this isn't a direct link to Visual DX, so I'm gonna go ahead and click this view online link um, under Visual DX, or that Visual DX. <clears throat> so when you log into uh, Visual DX, you have a couple of options here. You can search um, right away, or um, there's also um, a differential builder, differential diagnosis builder um, that you can start using based on category. Um, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about how to use Visual DX um, within the app. Um, for setting up your mobile app access, you're going to click this Get Mobile App link uh, down at the bottom, and you're going to create your personal Visual uh, DX account, um, entering this simple information. Um, and once uh, that is done, um, you can sign into your account. All right, so once you get the app installed and logged into your account, It'll look something like this, and there's a couple different ways to approach um, Visual DX. You could enter in a symptom or something like that. I like to search for uh, acne, and you'll see that you get some similar information to what you see in um, Up to Date, but it's a little bit more succinct. Um, then what you get there, a little less detailed, um, you get a synopsis, there are some ICD-10 codes, um, you can also get SNOMED codes, um, what you should look for, diagnostic pearls, um, you get these differential diagnoses and um, information about best tests and management and medication. Um, but really the, the key feature of Visual DX that makes it a little bit different is its incorporation of images. I can scroll through the column on the right and look at a variety of pictures 
of, um, of this particular diagnosis. So the other important feature of Visual DX is this Quick Start Differential Builder. And if I click on that, there's just general symptoms, but then there's also a specialty specific, um, such as dermatology, neuropsych, gastrointestinal. Um, I can click on any of these. If I click on dermatology, I'll get a different set of options that can start out my uh, differential diagnosis builder. So if I click single skin lesion, I'll give, I can give information about uh, my patient. So age, uh, gender, click done. Um, and then for skin lesion type, click smooth, um, papule plaque. Um, it then gives me a few additional options for narrowing that down. So if I click smooth plaque, I can do location of skin finding. Um, so in this case, it is on the leg. I can also describe any signs such as, if, is it painful? Is it tender, hemorrhagic? I'm gonna click painful. Um, and if onset of finding, it's developed steadily over weeks to months. Um, and in terms of medical history, um, you can tell if there's any uh, history of immunosuppression pregnancy, any of those. And I can click view differential in the lower right hand corner and it's going to give me um, the diagnoses that match all of those particular findings and then also a few others that uh, match some or most of the symptoms that I that I selected. So I have a few more resources that I want to talk about. Uh, the rest of the apps that I'll talk about are all free, so they're available to download from the App Store or the Google Play, or from Google Play um, by anyone. Uh, the first one is uh, the CDC vaccine schedule. And as I mentioned before, we vet these and we look at the organization. And so this one is from the CDC. So it's kind of a respectable organization. Um, and this is really very basic information about what the vaccine schedules are for different populations. So you can look at child, adolescent, adults, um, any catch up. If I click on child, it's going to give me a chart that looks exactly like what you get if you get a paper vaccine schedule. I can click on the names of any of these uh, vaccines to get some basic information about what it is. I can also click see additional information to get additional information about that vaccine, along with some links to outside information. So it's a pretty basic and um, comprehensive resource for strictly looking at vaccines. Very helpful if you're in pediatrics or family medicine. The next app that I'm going to talk about is called Hippocrates, and um, Hippocrates is a drug information um, app, and it's important to note that Hippocrates has both a free version and a subscribed version. The university does not subscribe to Hippocrates, so if you want to get the paid version, um, then you would have to make that decision on your own. The main difference between uh, the two different uh, versions is the size of the drug database. Um, I haven't heard any complaints from clinicians or people who are using this app in terms of not being able to find the information that they're looking for. So you can stick with the free one until, um, until that happens, maybe. So first of all, there's just basic drug lookup. So for example, I could look up sertraline. Um, and it'll tell me that sertraline is a generic name, but then there's also Zoloft, which is the, um, the brand name. If I click sertraline, it gives me the dosing information for adults, pediatrics. There's a black box warning. It'll have it listed there as well. Um, and information about adverse or common reactions. If you look over here, on the right side, there are some alter alternatives. Um, it also will provide you with drug interactions, so you can um, do a quick interaction check right there within the drug information. And so again, this is just really quick, uh, basic information about drug and um, drug dosing. Um, in addition to just the drug database, there's also this interaction checker. In this particular case, I can search for a particular drug um, I can look 
in uh, different sections. So for example, in cardiovascular, I can look at different drug classes and select them. So if I select a beta blocker, um, I can get a list of all of the beta blockers and click those and add those over here to the list on the side. Um, in this particular case, I already have a few drugs listed um, and there's only one uh, interaction and that's between Zoloft and dextromethorphan. Uh, and I can look at that interaction and see what the advisement is in terms of uh, taking that into account. Okay. Going back to the Hippocrates homepage, um, the other uh, nice tool that's a part of Hippocrates is the pill ID. So when your patient comes with their baggie full of pills, uh, you can help identify what some of those pills are. Um, you can add imprints up at the top. Um, you can select uh, shapes and you can select colors um, and it'll provide a list of uh, possible uh, drugs. The imprints are really what, what are going to help you get to uh, get to the drug type. So that's uh, Apocrates. So a good resource for drug information. And then the last uh, app that I would want to talk about is called EPSS. And EPSS stands for Electronic Preventive Services Selector. And this is produced by the Agency for Healthcare and Research Quality. And it provides information about uh, recommended services for preventative care. So again, this is really good for pediatrics or family medicine. Um, so service recommendations within this app are uh, graded on a ABCD scale. And if you click grade definitions, you can see what the definitions of those different grades are and bring that into your clinical decision making. If you search for recommendations, you can enter information about your patient. So if I have a 57 year old male who's obviously not pregnant, um, is a smoker and is sexually active, if I click search, it'll provide me the recommendations um, for that particular patient. Um, it starts out with the A recommendation, so in this case, colorectal, HIV, high blood pressure. So again, just a really helpful resource for uh, looking for information about preventative care. And those are all of the apps that I was gonna talk about um, today. If you have any questions about uh, these apps or run into any issues, please feel free to get in touch with me or for anything else uh, in your remaining two years here. I'd be happy to help out and thank you very much.